Mindset is a term that gets thrown around a lot in the education space. And I know that education language might make you roll your eyes, but I can't emphasize this enough. Mindset comes before skill. And this is something that smart students know. Hi, I'm Katie Azevedo of SchoolHabits.com. I'm a private executive function coach who teaches students and professional strategies to learn and work better. You can find me here, 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 and here, and anything I mention in this video, including a transcript, you can find in the description box. Now on my blog and here on my YouTube channel, I usually cover school habits and study skills and very tactical strategies, and very rarely do I cover mindset. But I figured because mindset is more important than skill, that it's high time that I cover that in a video. And in this video, I share the three top mindsets of the smartest students, of the top performing students, of the students who are the least stressed out. And these are the mindsets that lead to the best grades. Now, these mindsets are powerful. They straight up have the power to change everything, but only if you actually implement them. It is amazing that you are here watching this video and thank you for doing that. But the most important thing you can do is take what you learn and put it into practice. Try it. If it doesn't work out, try differently. Okay, try it again. All right, but you've got to take what you learn here from everything I'm teaching you and actually put it into practice. That is where the magic is. All right, so let's start with the top student mindset. Number one, persistence and patience. Being good at school does not happen overnight. It's not a switch that you flip on and off and then boom, suddenly you're some academic weapon. That's not how it works. Now, students who expect instant achievement and instant improvement from new changes or habits or skills that they're trying out set themselves up for disappointment. But top students think differently. They know that the results they want might take longer than they want, but they lean in and they stay. They persist. They stick to the new study methods, even though they're hard. They track their homework and assignment notebooks even when they don't want to and they have patience when the results are not overnight because good results that are long lasting do not happen overnight. So many students give up right before the payoff. It, it blows my mind. Let me give you an example. I teach time blocking as a time management strategy to many of the students that I work with. So this one student, I teach him time blocking, we go over it, he buys into it, right? And then he comes back a week later, he says, it doesn't work. And I'm like, okay, what happened? And he's like, well, I tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> and I'm like, give me more? Like, why didn't it work? And he tells me that he tried it one time. And the one time he tried it, it didn't work because he got distracted and he just didn't follow his plan. Like, that's all he had as an explanation. First of all, one time? <laughs> when do we ever try something one time and expect it to be a grand slam? That's mistake number one. And second of all, the right mindset is if it failed, he could have said, hmm, okay, so I got distracted. That's feedback. That's a data point. And he might think to himself, okay, well, how can I adjust my environment so that I'm less distracted next time? What can I do differently so that I can have greater success next time? But saying, oh, I, I tried it one time and it didn't work. That's not the mindset. Top performing students know things are gonna be hard. They patiently stay the course. And especially when it gets hard, they stay. Top student mindset number two, reflect and self-assess. Now, if you think these words are cheesy or like woo-woo, then you probably don't have this mindset yet. So that means this tip is especially for you. So self-reflection and self-assessment, what does that even mean? It means that if you get a bad test grade, you do a post-mortem on your test right away to figure out what happened. It means that if you're not understanding what's being taught in a class, then you're being honest about that and you're getting help. It means that if you're staying up really late every night doing homework, you're self-assessing and you're asking yourself, am I doing too much? How can I manage my time better? It is not just saying, well, this is the way things are. Now, another way that you can self-assess and self-evaluate is by thinking about your day-to-day -day operations and evaluate if they're taking you in the direction that you want to be going. Top students ask themselves the following questions very regularly. What do I want for myself? Am I doing the things that will take me someplace good? Am I happy? What's not working right now? What are my goals? 
Am I doing things that my future self will be embarrassed about or proud of? And is there anything I need to change? Now I have a free student self-assessment quiz. I'll leave that link in the description box. It's free, it's a download. And when you take the quiz, you identify what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. It tells you, okay, well maybe this is an area that you need to improve on. So that is a place to start if you're new to self-assessment. Okay, and top student mindset number three. I'm gonna save this one for the end because this is a big one. I mean, they're all big one. I, this list, whole list could have been I don't know, 20 mindsets long. So I had to pick the top three. So these three are all really important, but this one, this one might make the most sense to you, might feel less woo woo, where the other ones, they're super important, but I understand a student's natural response might be like, oh, okay, I, I guess I can just like start thinking that way because they're less like tactical, but this one's actually very tactical. And that is to focus on learning the material and not just to focus on the grades. If you're the type of student who focuses just on getting the grade, getting the completion check mark or whatever, you are making your school life <laughs> so much harder than it needs to be. Trust me, I know this. I have students, and I'm gonna, I'll share some stories in a minute, but I have so many students who come in and they are looking for hacks and looking for shortcuts. And those are the students who are the most stressed out. When in reality, the easier route would have been just to focus on learning the thing out of the gate instead of trying to find a way around it. Okay, let me explain this. Yes, there are shortcuts and sneaky little ways that you can use to just get your homework points, get your little check mark, but you're not actually learning the material. But what happens when you have a test on it? or you have to write a paper on it or talk about it in class. The smartest students who have the least amount of stress focus on learning the thing and not just on getting the grade. Top students who are the smartest focus on actually understanding what they're being taught and not just pretending. It's the pretending that takes way more effort than actually learning it. It's trying to fool someone into, oh, I, I did it and I learned it and I, it, you're using photo math. You're asking your friend, right? That takes so much more effort and it's so much more stress than if you actually had spent that time being like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna learn this stuff. I'm gonna care about actually understanding this. Now let me give you an example. Let's say that you're given 20 math problems for homework and you know the teacher only grades for completion and not accuracy, so you either just like write down random stuff or you're asking your friend and you get your homework little completion grades, right? And now you're thinking that you won. But did you, like, did you really win? What happens when you have a test on the material in a week? You have to either frantically watch YouTube videos to try to like learn the material or you fail the test. Oh my gosh, the anxiety. It would have been so much easier in the long run if you had done the actual homework, even if you didn't know how to do it, uh, uh, find a YouTube video then, right? Learn the material and then when it comes time for the test, you can just take the test without the anxiety because you know what you were supposed to have known. And top students know this. They have the healthy mindset that learning the material is always the easiest and the first step. And then doing that leads to the good grades, okay? Now they might not want to do their 20 math problems. They might think it's dumb, right? And, and that's fine, but they're doing it anyway. Now another example that I can give you, and this happens a lot, like this happens way too much with students that I work with either here in the office or, or on Zoom, and it has to do with reading books. I can't even tell you how many times that I work with students who do everything possible, like they get really creative. They're doing everything possible to not read a book that they're supposed to be reading for school. They'll use Spark Notes, but in reality, like Spark Notes is still a lot of reading, right? And you still have to like remember what Spark Notes said, right? They'll ask a friend just to give them the gist of what happens right before a class so that they can, you know, earn credit on some like reading check or something. And they fool themselves into thinking they're winning because they're earning their check marks on their reading check. And they're fooling the teacher into thinking that they read the material because they can contribute like really vague things in class discussions, right? But then, this is the kicker, they have to write an essay on the book. And this is usually when they come to me in tears. The drama, the chaos, the stress, the panic. Oh my gosh, but what if they had just read the book all along? a little bit each day, like had been assigned from the beginning, right? Like a chapter a night. Now they have to write the essay and all they have to do is focus on writing the essay. Instead of being like, oh my gosh, I didn't read the book and now I have to like do all this research and, and pretend that I read it. 
what if you what what if we had just read it from the beginning right so it's like such this self-imposed drama and chaos don't be that student do the work and then the assessment the, the test the essay the project the presentation will take care of itself don't try to beat the system don't try to fool the teacher learn the material that's actually the shortcut now, if you're still with me here, then you are amazing. And I have <laughs> one final little TED talky little nugget to share. The most naturally bright and intelligent student, like as measured by some IQ test, okay, will not go far without a healthy mindset. In fact, without healthy mindsets, including and, and specifically the three that I shared today, students will be unable to actually develop the skills. So all of the study skills and school habits and focus tips and things like that that I share on school habits won't be available to you if you don't have the mindsets that I talk about today. How we think drastically impacts what we do. And that's why I said at the top of this video that mindset comes before skill. And the good news about mindsets is that we can strengthen them. We can develop them into the point that they feel natural. So we don't have to look at them as mindsets. We're just like, oh, this is just my natural default mode of operation. You might have to force it in the beginning and then it feels natural. All right, so let's do a quick recap of the three mindsets. The top three mindsets of top performing non-stressed students are number one, they persist and they're patient. Number two, they self-reflect and self-assess. And if something went wrong, they figure out what went wrong and they adjust. And number three, they focus on learning the content and not just on getting the grade. Because in the end, that is actually the easier route. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching and never stop learning.